So let's talk about this required practical to do with density. To introduce it, a little story. So when I was little, I was asked which would weigh more, one kilogram of gold or one kilogram of feathers. Now, I mulled this over for about seven or eight years before coming to the conclusion that in terms of mass, they are the same, they are equal, you see. But the joke comes the fact that they take up very different volumes. They take up very different areas. And that's because their densities are different. So we can think of density as being a measure of how compact a material is. So if we are talking about gold, obviously that's very compact and talking about feathers, less so. So even though we're talking about the same mass, we're talking about a different volume. Obviously the, the feathers would take up more room. So in this required practical, you have to work out the volume of three circumstances, three, three materials really. A regular object, so like a cube, an irregular object, so something without a nicely predefined shape, something like a, perhaps a stone or a pebble, because they are irregular, they haven't got a, a defined shape, and then a liquid of some kind. Now, in terms of the maths that you have to do, it's all relatively straightforward. There's one equation that you need to know, and that is density equals mass over volume. Okay, so let's plug in some units. Uh, mass often measured in kilograms, that's the standard unit for mass. Although if you're doing it in a lab with something small, you might do grams instead. And volume, meters cubed, uh, again, that's the standard unit for volume, but if you're doing it in a lab with something small, you might switch to centimetres cubed. Really depends on what it is that you're up to. Density then, if you're dividing a value in kilograms by a volume in metres cubed, then your density unit will be kilograms per metre cubed. Okay. Uh, just purely out of interest before we start, if we then want to turn this into a triangle, so we've got three parts because we've got three values, um, what you're going to see, well, if I just rearrange this really quickly, um, what you're going to see is density times by volume. See, I'm just going to shift the volume over that way. Density times by volume equals mass which means that mass is going to be the one that goes on the top because density and volume need to sit next to each other. Density and uh, volume. That's kind of by the by really because in this required practical we're going to be calculating density lots. So this, this, this um, required practical is really all about the method because for each of these, for your, your block here, irregular object and your liquid, you need to find out a mass and a volume so you can divide the mass by the volume. So let's begin. We'll start off with the easiest one then. If you have a wooden block, let's say like so, and you want to work out its density, well, remember you need your, your volume and your mass. So for a regular object, what's our method? Well, job number one is you need to get yourself a ruler because you're gonna to need to do some measuring. You are gonna to need to measure the sides. So you get your ruler and you measure the height of the block. So height, you are gonna to need to measure the depth of the block. Now can I get the ruler lined up? Yes, the depth of the block. So this value here, and then finally the width of the block, this value just here. Okay, and then that those numbers multiplied together will give you the volume of the block. You then also need the mass, so for that you just need a standard balance. So you can stick your block on the balance and it will give you a, a value. So let's, um, let's have a quick go at one of these then. 
So let's say that this block had a height of, I don't know, that looks, call that one meter. It looks kind of tall. And then we'll say that this here is 0 0.5 meters in terms of its depth, and it is 0 0.5 meters wide. I've just done those numbers just by a bit of dead reckoning by looking at that block. So let's work this through. So the volume is going to equal 0 0.5 meters times 0 0.5 meters times 1 meter. I'm going to need my trusty calculator for that. 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 times 1. So that would be 0 0.25 meters square, uh, cubed. 0 0.5 meters cubed. There we go. And let's say, just for the sake of argument, that this balance gave me a value of three kilograms. Yeah, that sounds like a nice number. So just returning to our equation, density is mass over volume. So density equals was mass yellow or red? Uh, yellow. Density equals mass over volume. So then that would equal uh, your three kilograms that's obviously taken from there, divided by the volume, which I'll take from here, 0 0.25 meters cubed. And that will come out as being, where's my trusty calculator again? Let's plug some numbers in. 3 divided by 0 0.25, that would be 12. So the answer here would be 12 kilograms per meter cubed which means that if I had a full meter cubed of this block over here, it would weigh 12 kilograms. That's its density. So that's the relatively straightforward one. Let's have a look at the irregular objects. So these are objects without a particularly defined shape. Now it's straightforward to get the mass because all you need to do again is just stick it on a balance, but the volume is a little bit more problematic. I mean, it's not like you can measure the sides with a ruler and multiply them together. So you have to use a different technique. This is going to use um, a little trick to do with the displacement of water. Okay, let me show you what I mean. So to do this experiment, you may use one of these. It is called a Eureka can. Okay, and all it is is basically a metal pot and it's got a little spout coming off down the side here. And then what you do with your Eureka can is you fill it with water until just below the lip. of the spout, okay, just, just, just below, okay. You then get your irregular shaped object and you very, very, very carefully lower it in. I've seen it put in um, like, like uh, with a wire, for example, you can lower it in with a wire. So what you do is you get your, here's your irregular stone and you lower it in on an imaginably thin wire and then what will happen is that the water level will increase. That stone is taking up a volume. So this stone has got its own volume and it will push the water up, it will displace it. And as a consequence, water will start to pour down the spout and out. You then get this water and you catch it in a measuring cylinder, okay? And the volume of water displaced that runs down the, the, the spout and out, let's just say it's up to, I don't know, 200, let's say, so it's filled up to the, the 200 mark, that will be the same as the volume of the, of the rock. Well, let me row back ever so slightly. You might remember that the value here is mil, so that you might be thinking, hang on a second, isn't that 200 mil? Well, yes, but that is equal to 200 centimeters cubed. So that is the, the volume of my rock. Again, just a quick word on experimental error. Yes, this is brilliant for, um, 
for measuring the volume of a rock because that displaced water is the same volume, but you are also just purely by accident taking the volume of this very, very thin piece of wire. That does introduce an error, but it should be very, very small. And again, once you've got your values, I mean, you've got your, your mass, because you put it on a balance, and then you've done something clever, um, measuring the volume of the displaced water, let's say, you can then plug it into this equation here, density equals mass times volume, and then you've got your density of your irregular object. One quick word though, you might not do this with a Eureka can. Some places have got them, some places don't. You don't have to go as flash as that. You could simply do it with anything with a volume measurement up the side. So let's say that I fill this up to 150 with water, this measuring cylinder. And then I put in my irregular shaped object. Again, this will work to displace the water. So the water level will rise to 350. And it is the difference between where it started and where it ends. That difference is the rock's volume. It has displaced the water. It's made the water level go up. So that's just another way of doing it. You can do it with anything really with a, a volume measurement on the side. So that's, that's the trickier one. Finally, what about if you want the, uh, to work out the density of a liquid? How can you go about doing that? Well, thankfully this one is relatively straightforward. What you do is you get yourself a, a measuring cylinder and basically you pour your liquid in and then you can read your value right off the measuring cylinder. So that's that's no great problem. That's how you get your volume. That's pretty straightforward. But how do you go about getting a mass of a liquid? Because obviously if you just pour, pour it onto a balance, it's just going to pour off the sides. Well, you can then take your measuring cylinder and you can pop it onto your balance and then you can get a a mass reading off of your balance. Can you see the problem with this? Well, the problem with this is if you take your measuring cylinder full of your liquid and put it on the balance, you are going to get the mass of the liquid and the measuring cylinder. Okay, which is no good because if we want to work out the density of the liquid, we need the mass of just the liquid. So the only little trick to this one is that you need the mass of the measuring cylinder first. So what you do before you start faffing around with anything is you weigh your measuring cylinder, you get its mass, then you add your liquid into your volume, then you weigh them both on, and then what you can do is you've got your, your combined mass, if you like, of the liquid and the measuring cylinder, and then you can deduct the mass of the measuring cylinder. And then that will give you the mass of the liquid only. That's a rubbish cue. I, I can't let that cue stand. There we go. Liquid only. And that's the important thing because we've then got our mass and then we've got our volume and then we can go all the way back up here and we can plug it back into this equation again and you can work out the density of your liquid. Okay, so three similar but different methods, all to do with measuring the density of different materials. Thank you very much.